welcome to ABM EY Sciences. So today we will be learning about what is a cell. Now cell, we know that cell is the basic unit of life. So today we are here to clear the concept about cell. What are the misunderstandings we have will be cleared through this video. So cell was first discovered by Robert Hooke. Later, cell theory has come. So this theory explains what are the characteristics within a cell should be present that makes it as a cell. So cell, in a basic level, cell is the viable life form as a unit. Now, all organisms are composed of one or more cells. A multicellular organism may consist of millions of cells. So that's why it explains in the cell theory. Next, cell is the basic unit of life. Means an individual cell, if you take it from one organism, that individual cell, if it is live and the metabolism, replication, everything is ongoing inside the cell, then it's called a living form, living life. And that's why it is the basic unit of life. Now, cells can arise only by division of a pre-existing cells. Means cells should come from a parent cell. So then it will be divided to 2, 4, 6, 8, likewise it will be divided and the number will be increased. Now the basic properties of a cell, what are they? Highly complex and organized, means cell contains the cellular uh, material like cytoplasm, different organelles, nucleus, chromosome, everything makes a cell very complex and very organized because inside a small cell so much is ongoing. Cells acquire and utilize energy. So every cell, even single cell, needs energy to perform its own functions like DNA replication, protein synthesis, or performing metabolic pathways. Everything requires energy. And also, they acquire the energies through the metabolic pathways. So in metabolic pathways, they acquire the ATP molecules and that ATP molecules are again reutilized to a different mechanism. That is the basic property of a cell. Now, chemical reactions. Now, in every cell, there are different types of chemical reactions. Thousands of chemical reactions are ongoing at the same time. Like modifications of carbohydrates or proteins or removing a functional group or adding a functional group. These are all chemical reactions ongoing in a cell. They can produce more of themselves. They have the capability to produce from one cell to two, four, six, eight. So they have the capability to generate themselves from themselves. Now cells are dynamic. Dynamic means they can change their shape. They can migrate from an area to another area. And they respond to the environment around them. That's why they are dynamic. We all know the cells are of two types eukaryotic and prokaryotic so here i'm going to explain the eukaryotic first so this is the cell membrane which encloses a nucleus now nucleus contains chromosome which may be a dna now that nucleus is attached with endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum is a site where protein is synthesized. Now, when ribosome is attached to endoplasmic reticulum, that time it is called rough endoplasmic reticulum. When there is no ribosome attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, then it is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, again, Golgi body is coming up. So, Golgi body is the site where the proteins are targeted. Means Golgi body can send their proteins to the particular site where they should remain like a protein which is located in the plasma membrane that will be decided by the Golgi body that that protein should go to the uh, plasma membrane and then be directed from the Golgi body to the plasma membrane or any protein that resides in the cytoplasm nucleus likewise. Now mitochondria. Mitochondria is an energy house of cells. Without mitochondria, no cell will be live, eukaryotic cell. So mitochondria generates ATP and that ATP is utilized for several functions. Now ribosomes. Ribosomes is a crucial organelle present in the eukaryotes which prepare or synthesize proteins. 
TTS ribosome is used for photosynthesis in eukaryotes. Now vacuoles are very essential in case of eukaryotes because it has several functions. It can store waste products, it can store food particles, it can store gases. So whatever it is used at the storage molecules at the time cells can use them when they need them. Now it comes peroxisomes. Now peroxisomes are the specialized organelles which remove the radicals that are present in the cell or processed. They are when their cells is processing, when the life form is active, there are several mechanisms is ongoing. Now in these ongoing mechanisms, there are several reactions are ongoing. So as a byproduct from these reactions, there are production of several radicals, oxide radicals, which are harmful to cell, which can mutate the DNA. So these things should be removed. Now this removal process is done by peroxisomes. Then comes lysosomes so lysosomes are a very special type of organelles they degrade they contain different types of hydrolytic enzymes so they can degrade carbohydrates lipids proteins or any type of antigen everything is degraded within them the ph inside them is 5 to 6 which is lower compared to the cytosolic ph which helps them in their functioning of the cell now centrosome is very very important in their division purpose so they help in the formation of spindle microtubules so this spindle apparatus is formed with the help of centrosome now these are the cytoskeleton thread like structures which can be of three types microfilaments intermediate filaments and microtubules these are formation of the skeleton of the cell so our body or animal body contains a skeleton on which the muscle cells are attached and give them a shape likewise the cell is given shape by the cytoskeleton now we move on to prokaryotic cell so prokaryotic cell we know as a bacteria so bacteria contains nucleoid structure that is a nucleoid structure that is the chromosome which is just suspended in the cytoplasm there is no such covering around them now this is called plasmid plasmid is the extracellular chromosomal dna which helps bacteria in adverse conditions they produce some kind of antibiotic or chemicals which help them to survive when their conditions are not normal now these small particles are ribosomes they produce proteins they synthesize proteins now these small appendages around the edge of the bacterial cell are called peel so peel is helping them in asexual reproduction process like conjugation through conjugation they can transfer their genetic material from one cell to another cell which helps them to evolve or recombine these terms which I am saying now will be explained in my later lectures which I will be posting in this uh, video. So now this flagella, flagella is the apparatus which is present in the bacterial cells which helps them to movement. So they can move from one place to another place with the help of flagella. They rotate the flagella either counterclockwise or clockwise to move forward or move aside like this. So that's how you know now the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. So here you clearly identify that these organelles here are membrane bound, well separated, chromosome is well separated, there is endoplasmic reticulum, everything is there but there. here you cannot see these organelles except ribosome. So this is suspended in the cytoplasm. So there is a huge difference in the eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Now the features which are held common by these two type of cells. The both type of cells contain some of the features similar to each other. Like the plasma membrane of similar constructions, both of the plasma membranes are consist of phospholipid bilayer. Though the integral membrane proteins or peripheral membrane uh, protein composition may differ, but the basic plasma membrane structure is same. 
Now, genetic information encoded in DNA using identical genetic codes. What do you mean by identical genetic codes? Identical genetic code is A, T, G, and C. So, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. These are the basic genetic code which is used to encode a DNA. Now, shared metabolic pathways, glycolysis and TCA cycle. Glycolysis and TCA cycle is a basic cycle, is a basic metabolic pathways which is present in a live cell. And this is same in both the cases. Now, ATP is the chemical energy used for different purposes in both the cell and both the cells produce that and utilize that. But in case of prokaryotes, it is present in plasma membrane and in eukaryotes, it is present in a mitochondrial membrane which is produced in the mitochondria. Photosynthesis. Not all bacteria are capable of photosynthesis, but the cyanobacteria, which is highly capable of photosynthesis, which is the, and the elements which are used in this photosynthesis are highly comparable to green plants. That's why I have given the same uh, age for one another. Now, similar mechanism for synthesizing and inserting membrane proteins are also similar. Proteasomal structures means destruction of proteins is done in both the cases of eukaryotes and here the RK bacteria. RK bacteria is a separate from normal bacteria which I will be explaining later. Now what are the difference between these two types of uh, eukaryote and prokaryotic cells? What is not present from one to another? That is nuclear envelope containing complex structure which is not present in the prokaryotes. DNA associated protein. What are DNA associated protein? These are histone molecules which are present in are associated with the DNA and helps them to compact size within a dot like structure in a cell. So a huge amount of DNA is just compacted into a dot like structure with the help of these associated proteins called histone proteins which are not present in prokaryotes. Complex membranous cytoplasmic organelles like endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, lysosomes, endosomes, peroxisomes, and glyoxisomes. So these are the organelles which are well separated with membrane bound, which is not present in case of prokaryotes. Specialized cytoplasmic organelles for aerobic respiration like mitochondria is present in every cell. And in case of for photosynthesis, plant cells contain chloroplast. The complex cytoskeleton system act microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules associated with motor proteins. Plants contain cellulose in their cell walls, whereas the prokaryotes contain different types of proteins in their cell walls, which I'll be explaining later. Ability to ingest fluid or particulate material that is divided in endocytosis and phagocytosis is a very very efficient mechanism for eukaryotic cells to ingest something from the environment that is not present in case of prokaryotes. So I already told that microtubule containing mitotic spindle that is uh, helpful in cell division is not possible in case of prokaryotes. The presence of two copies of gene per cell is very Diploidy or likewise you know that humans are 2N that is diploid organisms. Why they are diploid? Because every gene is present in two copies. These are called alleles. So I will take a separate class on genetics then I will be telling you about what are alleles or diploidy or triploidy. I will give you everything. So now presence of three different RNA synthesizing enzymes like RNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3 which is present in the eukaryotes but in case of prokaryotes only one type of RNA polymerase is present. Now eukaryotes divide by sexual reproduction they need meiosis or fertilization. Now there are sexual reproduction in case of plants but uh, we will not consider this here. So in case of prokaryotes there is no uh, functioning of sexual reproduction. So eukaryotic cells what are the types of eukaryotic cells? So generally they are divided into four kingdoms, planty, protista, fungi and animalia. Now planty is a multicellular organism which is capable of photosynthesis means they are autotrophs, they can synthesize their own food and cell wall contains cellulose. Now, protista. protista is a unicellular organism though they have nuclei but it is not comparable to any of the animal plant or fungus that's why they will separate in four separate kingdoms. Now, colonial but 
So we are not demand by call only means individual protest can come together and stay and form a foreign like structure but we cannot say this as a tissue if they do not form tissue uh, animals are multicellular heterotrophic so what are heterotrophic heterotrophic is this uh, dependence on food means they cannot synthesize their own food they need food from other source which are produced by some other organism now compartmentalization that each an individual organelle and it is well covered with membrane they produce primarily by sexual reproduction and they have a complex organ system so complex organ system means likewise the heart kidney liver these are all organs which are not present in case of prokaryotes now fungi is a heterotroph same as animalia they do not synthesize their own food they depend on some other kind of food some species grow as unicellular but most of them are multicellular the fungal cell wall is composed of glucans and chitin which is specific to fungi it is not generally present in other four kingdoms now what are the types of prokaryotic cells prokaryotic cells are divided into two kingdoms bacteria and archaea now we'll see what are the difference between two types of kingdoms so bacteria cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan whereas archaea cell wall is composed of pseudopeptidoglycan so the composition of peptidoglycan and pseudopeptidoglycan i will explain in my later lectures which i'll be delivering here in my channel now metabolism includes photosynthesis and different types of respiration fermentation autotrophy but in case of archaea they mostly depend on methanogenesis methanogenesis which is specific to archaea means bacteria cannot show this property unique translation and transcription mechanism is followed in case of bacteria whereas the archaea translation and transcription mechanism is similar to eukaryotes that's what they move closer to eukaryotes 